Part two of worms, round worms. Let's get started. Round worms are scientifically known as nematodes. Nema means thread. If flatworms look like fettuccine, nematodes look like spaghetti. <laughs> ko ba ng pasta? Nematodes grow by uteli. As with most multicellular organisms, we get bigger by increasing the number of cells in our bodies. However, for nematodes, this stops at a certain point, and then from there, with that fixed number of cells, the worm kind of just grows by increasing the size of its cells instead of increasing the number of its cells. Nematodes are also the first group that we have so far encountered to have a body cavity. Pseudocelomate. You might think that the body cavity is fake. Actually, no, there is a legitimate body cavity inside. Because you see, in eucelomate organisms, such as ourselves, our entire body cavities are lined by completely just mesodermal tissue. What pseudo refers to is the body cavity is aligned by mesodermal and endodermal tissue. Roundworms also have on their integument this cuticle. It's this rigid structure that actually contributes to the fact that it looks very nice and round and stiff. Throughout its life, it also sheds this cuticle. They do not have circular muscles. And another is the fact that it's their muscles that reach to the nerves. Because for most organisms, it's the other way around. It's actually our nerves that innervate the muscles. We know it's a roundworm because it has chemosensory structures at the anterior ends called amphids. Let's have a look at the typical anatomy of your nematode. Hooray, they finally have an anus. So in essence, a roundworm is really just a tube that has a tube inside and gonads. What accounts for the roundness of a roundworm? It has a lot to do with the internal fluid pressure in its body cavity. The cuticle is fairly rigid. Its muscles are semi-contracted. Combination of that, you have fairly plump structure. Now since the inside of the body of the roundworm has like fairly high internal fluid pressure, how does the GI tract not collapse? That is where the muscular pharynx comes in because it actively pumps in fluid to sort of counteract the pressure that's being exerted by the fluid in the body cavity. Circular muscles are the muscles that kind of constrict this way. That means it effectively reduces the diameter of your worm-like organisms. Parang yung longganisa, sausage links. Kung saan mo tinatalian yung longganisa, circular muscles kind of work that way in that they tighten the body. What kind of movement can circular muscles provide? There is what we call peristaltic movement. Remember, if you constrict a certain portion, the same fluid that's inside the body will have to be pushed somewhere else. If you push the fluid one way, and then you kind of release, you have a kind of movement that goes You have that forward movement now, the peristaltic movement. But nematodes do not have that kind of movement because they do not have the circular muscles to do so. Instead, all they have are longitudinal muscles. If this is your worm and the muscles contract here, contract, so the worm will curve this way and this one will extend. And then if these will contract, the gagan ganun. So what movement do you get? Kung paulit ulitin yung lang yan, both sides. And the fact that you have the cuticle that's fairly rigid, so it kind of snaps back. That's, that's the movement that you get from nematodes. Now, does it make sense that their body is also tapering? Because they live in relatively aquatic, moist environments or they live in the soil. So having that tapering body profile allows them to actually burrow through soil, or if they're in water, that gives them that hydrodynamic shape to pierce through the water and reduce drag. The main two groups under this traditional classification are what we call adenophoria or aphasmidia, that means they do not have phasmids. And the other group is sesernentia, also phasmidia, the group with phasmids. What are phasmids? Amphids of the poet. Relatively same function, just found in the posterior region of your nematode. Thanks to the work of many nematologists, among which are Delay and Blackster, they came up with the modern taxonomy that accounts for, I think, something about ribosomal RNA, that now the taxonomy of nematodes has changed. We have class Enoplea, with an E, under which we have subclasses Enoplea, with an I, and Dorolimia. Then we also have class Chromadoria, with an E, under which we have subclass Chromadoria, with an I. Don't blame me, I'm not the one who made the names. Oh my god, I'm not Yes, I know, but don't be afraid. You don't have to memorize these, they're just grouped based on the shape of the esophagus, the number or the position of the glands that line the esophagus, the position or the shape of the amphids, and to some extent, the presence or the absence of phasmids, among many other things. Just know that these are some of the criteria that you can use to sort of help you identify a nematode if you happen to see one under the microscope. Just to give you an example, these are all the anterior structures of many of the common nematodes, at least according to their major grouping. You will find similarities in the morphology of the amphids and the esophagus. These are some of the diagnostic features for the members of these different groups. They can come in a variety of shapes. They can be like pores or slits, pouches, pockets, spirals, whatever. And those are some of the things that can actually help distinguish between species. Acetic acid, 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 vinegar. That is where you're going to find these nematodes. Especially in the unfiltered vinegar that, you know, hasn't gone through a lot of processing. Ah, you see, you know, if you eat it, it's native, it's like a nematode. No, actually, they're fine. It's not as if they're not going to be parasites. They're not going to be hurting you in any way. They're just there in the vinegar and they eat the microbes in the vinegar. These families, and another one that you'll see later, which is the Ancylostomidae, they are part of Order Rabditida. The members of this group used to all be under the group Cesernentia or Phasmidia, which means all of these families, they have phasmids. Members of the group Ascaridae are usually really large. Genobi bilang si Ascaris lumbricoides, or again, the human giant intestinal round. This is 30 centimeters. I think there were some that record up to like 40, 50 centimeters. Oh my god, that's like more than one foot. Ew. The male is typically smaller and it has a curved posterior end. The female is usually larger, straighter. You know, it just has a blunt end, it doesn't curl or anything like that. 
So for Ascaris, it's a fairly complicated life cycle in that when you eat the egg, the larva hatches, but then it doesn't like stay in your intestine and becomes an adult. It first, you know, turns into this larva that migrates back up to your lungs, and then somehow you kind of create that sputum, and then you swallow it and goes back to your intestines, and then it becomes an adult. That was fuck fest, nana man. Just go, 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 baby. We mga ganong stages pa si Ascaris. Kung saan muna pumupunta bago magsettle again dun sa intestines. They kind of make like this. The guy kind of wraps his posterior part to the genital ring of the female. This sensation for the female, that tightness, kind of signals to her that she's mating. The female will tend to look for the male and look for the male's embrace. If you are infected by one female, it could potentially lead to like blockages in your body. That's why infections with females could be potentially dangerous. It's a soil transmitted helminth, so if you happen to eat anything that's contaminated with poop that has the eggs of Ascaris, that's how you're gonna get these round worms. Members of the family Filariidae, they're the ones that have the microfilaria life cycle stage. For Wuchereria bancrofti, this is the causative agent of what we call elephantiasis. Yan yung mga nakikita nyo lumulobo yung paa, for guys. Lumulobo yung balls. So this one is spread through mosquitoes. A good way to prevent this parasite is actually to prevent the breeding of mosquitoes. Kung wala yung vector, hindi ka makagat ng lamok, hindi ka makakaroon ng tibak. Enterobius vermicularis. This is what we now call the pinworm. It lives in the large intestine, and what's really interesting about this is that at night, the female comes out of the anus, and then she lays her eggs just outside the anus. So the person infected with enterobius, you kind of know that they have it if they start scratching their ass at night. That sensation of the female laying eggs, you kind of feel that up your butt, so it's like, oh my god, nakatin ang ko. For enterobius, you can just inhale these eggs, and then you can have the parasite. Now, how are the eggs passed on to perhaps the next unsuspecting host? Pagkamat mo ng puwet mo, syempre yung eggs didikit dun sa shorts, didikit sa panty. In some cases, they fall out and didikit dun sa beddings mo. Paghubad mo ng short mo, yung blanket mo, shuk shuk, pag 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 pag, bago topiin, ganyan. Kapag may nakita kayong roommate na nagkakamat ng puwet, huwag ka na huminga until makalipat ka ng kwarto, umalis ka na dun sa dorm. And Salisoma duodenali is also commonly known as the Asian cookware. Yung counterpart in sa Amerika would be Nekator Americanus. You will be able to distinguish the species based on the morphology of their teeth. Ang cute ng mukha niya, no? Parang... <laughs> the male has, at the posterior part, what we call copulatory bursae. It's what he uses to wrap around the female and inject the spicules with the sperm and all of that and get the sexy time. Hookworms live in your small intestines, latch onto the lining of your intestines, and then they feed on the blood there. Well, ganun din, jejebs ka. But in this case, you don't really have to ingest the feces. Ingest the feces. So the larvae will hatch in the feces, and then after some time, it's just gonna wait for the next unsuspecting mammal to just step on that fecally contaminated grass or wherever that thing is. And then it'll hook itself into the skin, dig its way, and travel to your intestine. Naglalakad ka sa grass, barefoot, tapos may ansylostoma ng aso. When the larvae climbs up to your skin, it's like, wait lang, hindi naman to aso ah, hindi naman yata ako taga rito ah. So yun yung makikita nyo bigla na parang may roadmap na yung balat mo, kasi yung larvae, hindi niya alam kung saan siya pupunta. So it just kind of wanders aimlessly under your skin, and this is what we call creeping eruption, or cutaneous larva migraines. Trichurus trichurus also known as your whipworm. This is the only representative we have for subclass Dorylamia. The distinguishing feature, at least for this parasite, is that they have what we call a stichosome. A stichosome is this row of cells called stichocytes that are just esophageal glands that secrete enzymes to digest food. Trico means hair, and then ura, uris, means tail. But actually, the part that looks like hair, or the one that looks like whips, in your anterior part. Males are again smaller, and they kind of have that curved posterior, whereas the females, one shape boring posterior. And they're t larger too. Procurus also kind of has that same transmission route as Ascaris and also your hookworms. That's why together these three are called the Unholy Trinity. So if you have one, you probably have the others as well. Yeah, Unholy Trinity, package deal. Together for it. They live in the large intestine, usually at the rectal area. The following images that you will see are fairly disturbing. So look away while you have the chance. In three, two, one. Holy shit. I warn you, this is what we call rectal prolapse. So hindi po yan jebs. That's actually the rectum that came out. They kind of stay in the rectum. And of course, your rectum has nerve endings. Bakit nga ba may nerve endings yung rectum mo? Kasi syempre, di ba pag jebs ka, the fact that your rectum is sort of distended and filled with shit, it kind of sends a signal to your brain that, hey, you're kind of full of shit. We have to evacuate. The nerve endings won't be able to tell if it's a whipworm or a piece of shit. See, try curious, because they're staying in that rectal region, so the same stimulus that the brain receives tells the body to jebs. And sa mga bata, common to kasi maliban nila. So, iri lang sila ng iri. Tapos yun pala, wala namang jibs. Pero puro worms. So, kaya yan, iri ng iri to the point na bloop, lalabas yung kanilang rectum. For many of these soil transmitted helminths, you can diagnose them through microscopy. Just get a stool sample. Just titignan ninyo lang kung may eggs. Because that's what you typically pass out in your feces. For Trichurus, kind of has that football shape with the polar plugs. For Enterobius, kind of have those D-shaped eggs. And then for Ascaris, you kind of have that cortical thingy outside. And then may iba-ibang forms. May unembryonated form, may embryonated form. But these are some of the ways that you can diagnose if you have these worms in your intestine. So take a stool sample and have a closer look. What are the common trends that we see with many of these? They live in the intestines. 
organs and also some of them feed on blood in the case of your ancylostoma. Ano may nakikita natin sa intestine, sa blood? Nutrients! If it's in the blood, then these are nutrients that are about to be distributed to the different cells of the body. If it's in the intestines, then it's just a freshly digested stuff. That's usually where you will find these parasites. They take up real estate in these places where the food is just free-flowing, di ba? Buffet all day. And the added benefit of living in the intestine, makakalabas ka lang sa puwet. So you have a nice exit strategy. Bakit mas malaki yung females kaysa sa males? They need the extra energy to produce the eggs. They have to have that body that is able to support that. Because a lot of the energy devoted to actually creating the next life relies on the female. One other thing you may have noticed for some of these nematodes at least is that the males tend to have like curved posterior ends or they have bursae. So this is mainly for the process of copulation. Mandalas, nakikita natin, di ba, mga bulate sa bata kasi maglalaro sa dumi, di ba, tapos hindi naguhugas ng kamay, subo ng subo ng kamay. Paano nyo malalaman na may bulate? Especially if the child is hyperinfected, you're gonna see that they have enlarged abdomens, tapos ang payat-payat nila, tapos ang pandak-pandak nila, parang hindi na sila lumalaki. That's because, halos lahat ng kinain nila napunta na sa alaga nila. There are actually many other different kinds of parasitic nematodes flashing their names right here. And if you do study parasitology, then you'll get to know them more. But for now, it's enough for us to just get to know a few of these guys. Paano ko nalaman mo na may bulate ka? Oh my god, iinom ka na ba agad ng pampurga? No! Especially if you don't know kung ilan na ba yung alaga mo. Paano kung sobrang dami mong alaga? Pag uminom ka ng gamot, for Ascaris, there are times when it's like, Whoa! Oh my god, there's this toxic substance here that's gonna kill us, we have to escape! Warning, the following images are a bit disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised, look away if you do not want to see them in 3, 2, 1. Hmm, yan po ang mga pwedeng mangyari kapag uminom ka ng gamot at ang dami mo palang alaga. Sinagpanik lahat ng uod kung saan-saan na lumalabas. Lalabas sa tenga, lalabas sa ilong, lalabas sa mata, lalabas sa big, lalabas sa kwet. Kahit anong butas, maghahanap ng butas yan para lang makalabas. Huwag po tayo basta-basta iinom ng pampurga. It is best to first consult with a medical professional for that matter before you take any steps to relieve yourselves of these parasites. Fairly similar to flatworms, in terms of parasitism, we've already discussed that this is again nature's way of weeding out weak individuals. From a medical perspective and also from a veterinary and agricultural perspective, they can wreak havoc, they can cause a lot of economic losses. However, many nematodes are actually just minding their own business. They're, they, they're not parasites, and if anything, they're very beneficial to the ecosystems in which they thrive. And we are done with roundworms. So if you want to learn more, because there's just so much more to learn about roundworms, this is by no means the end all and be all of your adventure with nematodes. Because come on, nematology is actually like one whole semester. Go ahead and check out the references at the end of the chapter on nematodes for your main reference, which is Pachinik. He had some really nice links down there that I took a look at myself. That's how I discovered Nemaplex and the new taxonomy of nematodes. That's a really interesting read. It really took me several days to kind of figure it out. And of course, there is also the World Wide Web. I will leave a few videos right here for you to watch if you want to learn more. I will see you in the next one. How about you?